My name is Tyler. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are talking about the Coinbase IPO. The IPO of all IPOs is tomorrow. And I'm not going to sit here and bash the company and I'm not going to praise the company. So I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion, what I think about Coinbase and what I think about them IPOing tomorrow because you can't look at everything in a positive light or a negative light. You really have to have a neutral input on a company to make a good investment decision. So that's what I'm here to do i'm going to be giving you guys my honest opinion so if you do like this kind of content and you want to stay up to date with all these great stocks whenever changes happen cciv neo it's going to be coinbase and all these other companies hit the like button subscribe for me trying to hit 500 subscribers so i would greatly appreciate any one of you guys that go ahead and do that as well as comment down below i respond to every single comment first things first i think it's important to go over the difference between an ipo and a direct listing because there are some huge differences in the two and if you guys don't know coinbase is going public via a direct listing so this has a huge implication because most companies usually do ipos instead of direct listings so this is kind of unique in that way and you guys should hear this if you're even thinking about investing in coinbase so initial public offerings and direct listings are two methods for a company to raise capital by listing shares on a public exchange while many companies choose to do an initial public offering an ipo in which which new shares are created, underwritten, and sold to the public. Some companies choose a direct listing in which no new shares are created and only existing outstanding shares are sold with no underwriters involved. So basically with this, without going too far into it, IPOs have a lockup period, right? So if, if you, let's say Roblox IPO, people got in at that around $35, $40 a share, but they have to agree not to sell them for six to even even like two, three, four, five years, just depending on the lockup period. So you can't sell shares. And that's where you'll get a lot of companies like Palantir when they IPO'd, I believe theirs was six months. You get all these shares being sold in instantly after that six month lockup period. But with this, people could just dump all the shares. I'm not saying that's what they're gonna do, but a lot of people have got very rich early investors by investing in Coinbase and now going public with a such a high valuation. I thought explaining the IPO and direct listing uh, differences was an important thing, so I put that first. Now we're gonna get into the actual valuation of Coinbase and how much they're gonna be listing at per share tomorrow. So Coinbase sets direct listing reference price at $250 a share, and this is going off a of market demand. Demand, right so if there's a lot of demand we could open up a hundred percent from the share price so I wouldn't be surprised if we open in the $500 range so valuing the company as much as 65 billion and like I said if we're up a hundred percent on the shares which is quite quite possible it's such a hype IPO then this will really be worth around 130 billion dollars and that is what is scary and we're going to go into some of the negatives and some of the positives so you guys on whatever side you are on with this you are going to want to watch this video because i am going to tell you guys exactly how it is i'm not sugarcoating anything for you guys because i want you guys to make the best decision and i don't care if it gets dislikes likes any of that you guys need to have the knowledge behind this to make the best decision so um yeah, we're not going to read any of that. Listing at $250, company at $65.3 billion. Uh, regardless of which share count is used to calculate the company's valuation, its new worth is miles above its final private price set in 2018 when the company was worth $8 billion. So the difference here and really why I explained the direct listing is if the company was valued at $8 billion, anybody that invested in 2018, 2019, or, or even before that, got insanely rich guys if if this is valued at 8 billion in 2018 and this is going to be valued probably around 120 to 130 billion tomorrow and there's no lockup period so those initial investment investors can sell their shares there is going to be no price bottom on this so that's what i really want to get across you guys that this could this will probably rip up the first two or three days probably Till Thursday or Friday and then we could see a major major sell-off with a lot of these early investors selling their shares because they are up thousands of percents on them so that is kind of what I'm expecting just to give you guys a glimpse into my mindset I'm not saying it's a bad company or anything like that I like the company I like what they do but the the lack of a lock-up period is kind of alarming um, so 
it does says immediate chatter following the company's direct listing reference price was that the price could be low while coinbase will not suffer unusual venture capital sensation sensor if shares quickly appreciate as is as it is not selling stock in its flotation um it's just kind of opinions right there um okay so now i'm going to show you guys this article and it is very very bearish so if you're all gung-ho about this you don't care what the valuation is then i do encourage you guys to follow your gut follow your heart do what you think is best but there is a lot of good points in this that you cannot pass up on if if you're a smart investor it says should you buy coinbase the valuation is ridiculous based on this math goes on to say coinbase may be a good company but coin valued at 100 billion is not a good stock so like i said very bullish article just to be aware of that uh even though coinbase revenue surged over the past 12 months the, co the company has little to no chance of meeting the future profit expectations that are baked into this ridiculously high expected valuation of 100 billion the crypto markets are very young and we expect many more companies to compete for the profits Coinbase enjoys today. As the cryptocurrency market matures, we expect Coinbase transaction margins to drop precipitously. Now, I probably botched that word, but you get the point of what they're trying to say here. This is the same thing that happened with the free brokerages, right? So everybody had to lower their commissions. It used to cost a lot to make day trades, any type of trades, options trades, used to cost a lot of money. And recently, as there's been more apps like Robinhood and Webull, other brokerages have had to bring down their cost to keep clients on their platform. So that's basically, long story short, what they are saying is gonna happen with Coinbase. They're not going to be able to charge these ridiculous fees because there's going to be so much competition that will do it for cheaper. So that's the main point to get from this. Um, goes on to say Coinbase expecta expected valuation of $100 billion implies that its revenue will be 1.5 times the combined 2020 revenues of two of the most established exchanges in the marketplace, the NASDAQ and Inter Intercontinental Exchange, the ICE, the parent, the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange. So that's pretty interesting. It says our calculations suggest Coinbase's valuation should be closer to $18.9 billion, a 81% decrease from the $100 billion expected valuation. And I kind of agree with this. I think $18.9 billion is really low considering how much revenue this company did. And we're going to get into that in just a second. But I reasonably think Coinbase valuation should be anywhere between 40 and say $80 billion, billion, just given that so much hype is around this. But anything over 100 or even 100 is just way too crazy for me. Now, this is where it really starts to get interesting. So in 2020, Coinbase collected about 0.57% of every transaction in fees, which totaled $1.1 billion in trading revenue on $193 billion in trading volume. These trades made up 86% of revenue in 2020. Um, and then I don't want to read all this to you guys. I don't want to literally just read the article the whole time. Um, but right here it says, for an example, if Coinbase's revenue share of trading volume fell to 0.01% equal to traditional stock exchanges, its estimated transaction revenue in the first quarter would have been just 35 million instead of an estimated 1.5 billion now, this is my big concern that i have with coinbase valuation being over a hundred billion dollars is the high margin you guys heard that 0.57 percent of a total transaction so that sounds small when you compare it to small transaction sizes but when you're dealing with millions of dollars in buys for let's say bitcoin for a hundred million dollars that's five hundred and seventy thousand dollars just in fees that would go to coinbase now competitors can come in and charge less and start taking away market share from coinbase and that will dramatically reduce coinbase's revenue or force them in the most likely situation force them to lower their fees to stay competitive basically down to nothing the same way robin hood and weeble did to other major brokerages like td ameritrade and thinkorswim schwab all these other places they had to go to free trading now if you guys think about it that time delay it took for major brokerages to step up to the plate and go zero commissions to compete with a robin hood and weeble they lost a considerable market share to Robinhood 
and Weeble because they did not innovate fast enough and even still charge on some platforms charge for options. I think it's like 65 cents per for options and less people actually trade options over there. That's more of people that have been on the platform for a long time. So that is where companies that innovate and beat the competition end up doing better in the long term. So I think it's a race against time if Coinbase can get more active users that trade more and make more off a smaller percentage or if their profits will be completely destroyed by the competition and other people go to other platforms and trade on there as well and just lower the active trading volume on Coinbase. And I don't mean lower because I don't think it's going to get lower, but you're going to have to justify this valuation or the valuation is going to come down. For all the reasons we have talked about in this video, I am not a fan of the Coinbase IPO at such a high valuation with the fact that these early investors can sell their shares instantly as soon as the market opens if they want to. Now, they're not going to do that. They're going to wait at least a day or two and let the price figure itself out. And then they're going to start dumping their shares because why dump your shares in the beginning of the day if Coinbase IPO is going to run up 100% in that day? You're not going to do that, right? So that is what I think is going to happen. We're going to go up for a couple days and then we're going to come crashing down really really hard because there's no bottom there's no floor on this ipo we are literally up to the market demand and as far as where the price goes how high or how low so depending on what that is it could be really good could be very bad but i just am not a fan of the stock especially with the race to zero like they were talking about whereas in such a competitive field you're gonna have to make more competitive prices and you're not gonna be able to pay out super high interest rates to people so they're not gonna want to hold our all their crypto there and tons of other reasons we have went over in this video i don't want to go over everything obviously at the end right here but that is just why i don't like coinbase ipo if you're going to play the coinbase ipo i would set a set amount right so if you're planning to spend let's say a thousand dollars on coinbase stock I would probably buy around 300 to 400 even $500 on the first day if you just have to own the company, right? I totally get if you have to own the company. I felt that way about other companies that have been great investments in the long term, but... I would keep that other $500 open just for when the shares dump because I'll be making follow-up videos. And if you guys want to stay up to date with that, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications if you want to, if you want to be notified, uh, because it's it's going to happen. I can tell you guys for, for basically for a fact, it's going to happen. So I would save that extra $500 or whatever your amount is uh, to go shopping when it's at a much lower price. And this stock is going Going to peg or track Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin has huge swings up or down, which it already has, it's it's pretty much gonna track the cryptocurrency. So that is not really a huge deal, but I figured I'd throw it in here anyways. You guys know how I feel. You guys, let me know how you guys feel down in the comment section down below. Check out the links in the description. All those are free. You guys can check all that stuff out. I'm going to get out of here. It is getting late. I hope you guys are smart trading this IPO tomorrow. Let me know what you guys are doing. Like I said, how you're trading this down below in the comments. Do respond to every single comment, but I'm going to get out of here. You guys have a great day and a great night. I will see you later. Peace out.